Mead, a video series hosted by Children's Hospital and Medical Center in Omaha, Nebraska. This video concerns the management of a newborn found to have a hemoglobin variant on their newborn screen. Per ACCME guidelines, the review, release, and expiration date for this video are listed here. This video is a part of a research project supported by the Genetic Services Branch of the Maternal and Child Health Bureau. This has been approved by the Institutional Review Board of the University of Nebraska Medical Center and Children's Hospital and Medical Center. Children's Hospital and Medical Center is accredited by the Nebraska Medical Association's Commission on Medical Education to provide continuing medical education for physicians. Children's Hospital and Medical Center designates this activity for a maximum of one half hour of AMA PRA1 credits. Physicians should claim only the credit commensurate with the extent of their participation in this activity. Please note, you are welcome to watch this video as many times as you need. However, you may claim credit for it only one time. My name is Dr. James Harper. I'm a pediatric hematologist and I'm a consultant to the Nebraska Newborn Screening Program. In case you have additional questions, uh, my email address is here. I have no pertinent disclosures to this video. The video's objectives are to inform you of the proper steps to obtain confirmatory data, to provide you with data regarding common genetic counseling issues arising from this diagnosis, and to provide you with information intended to help pro you provide clinical guidance to the parents of this infant regarding this diagnosis. The purpose of evaluating variant hemoglobins is that some of them have clinical significance. They can affect the child in the form of tissue hypoxia, either because of anemia or because of decreased hemoglobin effectiveness. They can also interfere with other lab tests. Examples of clinically important variants found in Nebraska include hemoglobin Hammersmith, which is associated with severe hemolysis, and hemoglobin J Baltimore, which is associated with interference with hemoglobin A1C measurements. Testing in the newborn period is focused on confirming the correct diagnosis in the child, and this is done with a test called the Hemoglobin Confirmation Newborn, available through the regional lab. In later life, or in testing parents, we recommend three tests, a CBC and retic count, a ferritin, and a hemoglobin electrophoresis, and these can be arranged through local labs or any of the standard reference laboratories. Interpreting the results in the newborn focuses on the pattern FAV in which fetal hemoglobin is the majority, adult hemoglobin is next most common, and the variant hemoglobin is least. This is typically uh, associated with a diagnosis of a variant trait. FV would imply the fetal hemoglobin and variant hemoglobin only. In a term baby, this would refer to a homozygous variant or a condition in which A hemoglobin wasn't made at all, uh, or a laboratory error. A premature infant also has to be considered for a gamma chain variant. These uh, hemoglobin variants are inherited in an autosomal uh, manner. In this example, the mother has the abnormal hemoglobin and she has a 50-50 chance each time she's pregnant of passing that gene on to her children. In this example, the first daughter uh, did not inherit and the first son did. There is no gender association with this uh, condition. So where do I go for information on these? This is the website for the American College of Medical Genetics or ACMG.net and this is an example of their uh, home resources and act sheets. The newborn screening act sheet may have come to you from the newborn screening program already. If not, you can find these here. This is an example of the newborn screening act sheet for FAV or hemoglobin variant carrier. A listing of common differential diagnoses, a list of a description of the condition, and then steps that you need to take now are listed here. Additional information is also included. 
So actions needed to taking now uh, include contacting the family to inform them of the screening result and to reassure them that these individuals usually do not have clinical problems. The baby needs to have a CBC done now and then repeat it again at six months. The baby's hemoglobin needs to be uh, confirmed again with the hemoglobin confirmation newborn exam. Family members need to be offered referral for genetic evaluation and counseling or hematologic evaluation and counseling. Uh, and then the report of the findings to the newborn screening program is always required. This is an example of a diagnostic evaluation algorithm uh, sponsored by the American College of Medical Genetics. By this point, the baby has already had the initial newborn screen, and now we are confirming it. And once the diagnosis is confirmed, this step uh, is uh, taken in which a CBC is done, and if the child is found to be anemic for age, they are referred for uh, prompt evaluation by a hematologist. If there is no anemia, then no further testing is required for the child, but the family should be offered genetic counseling. Parental testing is necessary uh, in terms of being offered uh, because some of these variant hemoglobins have impact on uh, tests which become more common as we get older. For example, interference with hemoglobin A1C measurements are common uh, problems with hemoglobin variants, such as the hemoglobin J Baltimore mentioned earlier. Uh, parents should be offered testing, and again, the tests include a CBC, a ferritin, a hemoglobin electrophoresis, and then genetic or hematologic counseling as desired. Guidance for parents. Children with variant hemoglobin traits are most commonly unaffected by their trait. Clinically important variants are uncommon, but warrant a referral to a pediatric hematologist. For those variants that affect the labs, documenting parental status is helpful both for their family planning needs as well as their own personal health. And because it has impact in adulthood, it's important to tell the parents to write this down in their child's baby book and make sure it's clearly available in their records so that when the child's older and they want to have their own family, they know what their status is. Well baby and well child care schedules are normally unaffected by this finding. If you need references um, or referral sources, the Nebraska Newborn Screening Program is available at 402-471-0374 Hematology consultations are available, and you may contact me at 402-559-7257. Genetic counseling is also available, and you may arrange this at 402-559-6418. Thank you very much. Your feedback regarding this video is highly appreciated. To leave feedback, suggest new topics, learn about other CME activities here at Children's, and to register for CME credit for this presentation, please go to childrensomaha.org slash medical education, all one word, and then follow the links to the appropriate uh, page. Thank you very much, and good day.